Hi, this is Peter from Intuitive Analytics. In this video, we'll review some of the costs and risk statistics in Smart Models applications by using the free Smart Models cash flow model example. To do this, we'll use the interest rate model described in detail on our site and model a 20-year bullet $100 million variable rate bond. In other videos, we'll use the model example to look at different combinations of interest rate swaps and caps to see if we can build some intuition as to how these metrics will change with different structures. Ultimately, this knowledge provides an excellent basis for discussing these concepts with clients or others who might be wrestling with difficult capital structure decisions. So, you can see here that we've got our input parameters for the model. We've got a starting rate of 5%, an average rate of 5%, zero volatility, a mean reversion of 0.2, an exponential for the volatility term of 1, and we're just going to uh, simplify this and make annual payments. Let's just walk through what the tabs are in this particular model. We have our inputs page, where we are now. We have our normal samples, which are samples from a normal distribution. There are 200 of them. Uh, actually, there are 100 of them, but we have used the opposite of each of the random samples in order to create a symmetric distribution at each point in time. And that is a fancy word for that, is using antithetic variates when you're doing random sampling. But uh, it simply ensures that the center of your distribution is exactly where you expect it to be, in this case at zero for a normal distribution. Our rate simulation, which is based upon a formula, again, that we have gone through in detail in other places, in this case is 5% all the way across because our volatility we've already zeroed out. Our rate chart shows 5% for every one of the 200 simulations. Our variable rate bond as a result is paying $5 million a year and the principal comes out in the end as a bullet. We have no swaps, we have no caps, and our total cash flow is five million bucks until the very end when we've got a hundred million dollars of principal, which ultimately adds up to 105 million on an expected basis. So what happens when we change the inputs into the model? Well, we have these portfolio statistics here, which give us a number of different measures that will change as we change our inputs. The only two that are non-zero right now are the average annual debt service or the average expected dollar cost which here is $10 million. This is the $5 million of interest every year plus the $100 million bullet at the end averaged out. And in this case, we're just using an IRR for our yield calculation. Now, first thing let's do, let's change our starting rate to say 1%. Not unexpectedly, now that we've got some differential in rates across our variable rate bond. We've got an average annual debt service or average expected dollar cost of a little less than $10 million now and an overall IRR yield of about 402. We can see this in our rate chart. We're now starting at 1 and heading up towards 5% over time. But we still have zeros for these various risk measures here. What is going to make those change? Well, our rate volatility, if we enter a number here that is non-zero, let's go ahead and make this consistent with something approximating historical short-term rate volatility. Let's call it 40%, fairly conservative. And now we have a average dollar volatility or average debt service volatility of about two and a half million. And an average budget volatility of 1.9 million. In order to get the other calculations, the cash flow at risk and this thing we call budget at risk, which we'll explain in a minute, we need to calculate using this calc stats button here. And that runs a little macro, which fills in those two numbers. So our max cash flow at risk is a little over $7 million, and our max budget at risk is about 3.8 million. But what do these things mean? Well, we've got a couple of graphs on this page which will help. Here we have a snapshot of one of our viewers from our capital application. And the capital application is a risk-adjusted 
bond solution and financial structuring tool. And here we have a solution which gives us, on an expected basis, level expected debt service. But we also see we've got this red line running up above. And this red line, for this particular example, is showing us our 95% highest debt service payment for each budget year. Uh, that 95% worst case red line is also repeated down here, but is only the increment relative to debt service. What cash flow at risk is, is the difference between this red line and our expected payment, in this case, the top of the bars. So if we want to look at our max cash flow at risk, we're just looking at the maximum difference between that red line and our expected debt service. So it's this maximum amount right here. So in going back to our model, this $7 million is the maximum difference of our 95% worst case debt service payment and our expected debt service payment. But what is this uh, debt service volatility? Well, this is another way to look at the cross-section variability in debt service payments. And what I mean by that, I'll explain in just a second. But what this tells you is that on average, across the entire analysis, which in this case is 20 years, a debt service will be within plus or minus two and a half million dollars about two thirds of the time as a rough estimate. That's what the dollar volatility on average is telling you. It's basically a standard deviation. If we look at that graphically, and this will also inform budget at risk and budget volatility descriptions, but here we have interest rates in a simulation. And if these interest rates are mapped into dollars for interest expense, they'll look similar, but the axis might change. See the vertical axis here has changed to millions of dollars. And the cash flow at risk, or any at-risk statistic, along with the volatility statistic that we just described, the dollar volatility, is looking at the width of the distribution of payments at a, at a given time slice, at a given point in time. And so you can think of this as specifically going out to a point in time, looking at that set of simulations right there, and your at-risk statistic is telling you what the difference is at a certain confidence level between that, say, 95% worst case and the expected case at that point. And the debt service volatility or the dollar volatility is showing you what the standard deviation is for those debt service payments, again, at that time point. So if we look at this actual calculation uh, back on our workbook, and this is a hidden sheet the VAR list sheet uh, that you can unhide in the latest version of this workbook, version 1.5. You've got in each period sorted cash flows, sorted total cash flows from the highest all the way down to the lowest. And what we're doing with the cash flow at risk is taking the 95th percent highest cash flow number in each time step, and you can see that's row 29. This is the 10th. We've got 200 simulations, so number 10 would be the 95th percentile. And subtracting that off from the average cash flow, which is in row 16 right above it. And so we've got a different cash flow at risk for each year. And what we're going to do is grab the maximum of them all the way across, which you can see happens here in year 11 column Q, a little over $7 million, $7.074 .07 million. That's how the 95% max cash flow at risk is calculated. The volatility, the average debt service volatility, is very simple. We take the standard deviation of each one of these columns and at, uh, average them out all the way across the simulation. Now, the debt service volatility in the first period is going to be a lot lower than it will be farther on out because volatility scales with time, the square root of time specifically. But on average, we can get a sense for how much 
a particular capital structure might vary over time and how much risk in cash flow terms the issuer is exposed to. Contrast that with the, the budgetary statistics and this is where we're looking at the simulation from one time period to the next. Any long-term, any debt service structure is really just a set of multi-period budgetary problems. And each one of those periods has an amount of uncertainty related to it. The budget at risk is the 95% worst case increase in debt service relative to the prior period. So going from one period to the next, given the inputs in the interest rate model, how much might interest rate payments change given the variability of rates? Budget volatility, on the other hand, is simply that. It's the standard deviation of all the changes going from one period to the next within the model. So this allows us to get a sense either at a cross-sectional point in time with the cash flow at risk and volatility statistics or from one time period to the next with the budget at risk or budget volatility statistics. Depending upon the purpose of your analysis, you might use one versus another. So here we see that from one time period to the next, our maximum increase in debt service at the 95% confidence level is about $3.8 million. Our average budget volatility is about $2 million. Our 95% capital cost at risk is about 414 basis points. And that means that our 95% worst capital cost in any given period, in any given year, was about 414 basis points higher than our expected capital cost in that period. And our capital cost volatility, which again is a standard deviation of the capital cost, is 2.08%. So about two thirds of the time, you're within plus or minus 2% of your expected capital cost, which here we have as uh, 391. With some of these metrics in hand, we can now look at different alternatives including interest rate caps or interest rate swaps, and see as those structures change how these various measures change, both cost and risk. Thanks for watching this video from Intuitive Analytics. If you've got feedback or questions or comments, please give us a ring or shoot us an email. Have a great day.